All right, back we go. Let's do it again. Another video. ENG. And the big pop today. ENG. N Global Corp. 15.65 million share growth, uh, short growth 66%, it's rising, 186 million market cap, cash 12 million, revenue 69 million, assets 32 million, stock to it's over 1,000, 1.22K percent, insiders own 43%, institutions 18%, uh, income 800,000, debt 8 million, Valued at enterprise value, 115 million. So it's a little bit overvalued. And the profile here, while well, so a lot here. Uh, engine, engineer modular solutions to energy industry operates the following segments, uh, procurement, construction, management, automation, corporate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, da, da. Technology, electrical projects, primarily to upstream and downstream sectors, projects throughout the uh, United States. This thing is long to read. The corporate segment represents other expenses that do not individually meet criteria for segment reporting. The company was founded by William A. Kosky in 1985 and is headquartered in Texas. You have 147,000 insider buys, no sells. And you know this pop today, 69 million sales, 12 million float on Finviz. Uh, and Global remains uh, regains Nasdaq compliance. That was December 7th. I think you have to be over one. <clears throat> Let me see on Finviz. So what do they do? They provide engineer modular solutions to the energy sector. So you know energy's been hot. U.S. military, public sectors, maintenance, pipelines, pulp paper industries, petroleum, refining, maintenance repair. So this will be the energy sector. <clears throat> this has been on fire. And the monthly disc goes way back to 1998. Well, this went all the way down below one. This went up to 44 cents, has rocketed to 17 plus in 2008 and crashed. Came back down again and went to 30 cents. Then it's been back and forth around that three level. Then the weekly, it's making moves lately. This is the daily. Has this done any splits? I don't see no reverse splits. All right, so this was going along. I had the pop 2017 to three, you know, came back and forth, nothing major, just, you know, smaller moves. Right there in October, 10.4 million, this thing really popped. You got over one, then it didn't do nothing. Came back to 75 cent line. And then here, pop 22 million, really went over four. Came back, and what do you see here? You can draw a line right here. This is a, like you call it symmetrical triangle. The high is getting lower, the low is getting higher, or actually it's a descending triangle. Held pretty well. And then we bounced again right at 164 to three, and then all the way up to seven plus today. It's, look at the volume in the updates, very strong stock right now with energy. Let me get a little weekly, where's this going? You have seven. You know, you see a little up here, eight, nine, the nine level. I would say the nine level, there's a lot of resistance. So I look for anything over, yeah, this could fall back though, but looking forward if this can eventually keep going, maybe nine plus. Now you want this to stay over four and you want it to stay over this 20 EMA. See it's crossing up about 338. Then you want this trend line to hold which is about two, two and a quarter, or near 250. You don't want it to go below there. You know, everything's on a run. This could come back strong. You don't know. You don't want to buy it certainly here at the high, <clears throat> but it's on the run right now. So, you know, big day today for longs. This is one of my favorite plays. You have a low to high play. Say a pre-market, you know, nothing major. It's going along. 
going along. And then you see this, you know, high a day break, pre-market high, $5. The low's holding well. You know, it's a nice, the low getting higher to that break line of five. And your stop on this is 75, play that quarter line. It's a good wide enough line. You have to shrink it. You can play, you know, you want to play even smaller. That's up to you, but I'm saying that's a great line to play on the 10 minute. Look at this, 10 minute, 13, 20 EMA, another great run. Yeah, all this is working too, the market's so strong. There's going to be days, you know, months ahead, this is not going to work. It's going to go here and then pop and fade. The stock market is always changing. So, you know, Ian Jada says, uh, great looking daily. When you see up, upward movement like this, so it's going to be volatile within that range, but it's a very strong stock right now. All right, where are we at now? Let's go to XSPA. Changing this to four stocks, so I can pump them out faster. It was doing five, but it was taking a little bit too long. All right. Express Spa Group, 68 million float, 8% short growth, market cap, 6 million, smaller one, 61 million cash. It's pretty good. Revenue, 18 million, assets, 81 million. Stock puts 208%. Insiders don't own anything, 1%. Institutions, 11%. Current debt, 14 million. Doesn't have the income. Enterprise value, 28 million. So it is undervalued a little bit in this penny. The health and wellness services company operates through Express Spa, an airport retailer of spa services. Expra offers travelers spa services, including massage, nails, skincare, as well as spa and travel products. The company was founded by Jonathan Medved and David Goldfarb, January 9, 2006, headquartered in New York. So do a lot of massage, spa, nail, skin. I see now insiders information. They have 18 million in sales, 63 million float on Finviz. Uh, any recent news? Doesn't say anything. I haven't seen nothing recent on this. December 22nd, they signed a deal for new Express Check COVID testing facility at say Salt Lake City, Utah. Wait a minute. They do spa services. What is it? So let me read this here. They signed a deal for new Express COVID-19 test facility. They signed a lease amendment for a COVID-19 facility in Salt Lake City, Utah, international. Expected to fully be operational by mid-January. The pop-up. Mythology enables Express Accelerate Express Checks rollout to additional airports at lower cost. Four testing rooms, anticipated capacity to administer over 250 tests per day. Uh, rapid testing, COVID-19, and a PCR test. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> you have a spa company jumping into COVID testing now. Let me look on the um, gym viz here. Okay, pedicures, manicures, back feet, do, 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 travel products, pillows, blankets, massage tools. Provides 19 COVID-19 screening testing. Communicable, communicable diseases such as influenza, mono, leucosis. Uh, Streptococcus flu vaccination under Express Check brand. So when do they jump? They're doing spa stuff, and all of a sudden they're doing COVID. <laughs> so this is what I mean. So another company, like, let me see. Let's jump on the COVID bandwagon. We can make a lot of money. So, all right, monthly on this is started in. Uh, 2010, this wasn't 2000 uh, stock. They did three reverse splits. Came back down on the weekly. You know, really, the stock's been hammered down. Ever since the reverse split here, which was 2015, 
was it? November. You know, this came down from 220, whatever it was. Then it came all the way down to 20, then a reverse split again. Then you have the 15 level. And you have the 137 level. Now this bounced in March, you know, with the market finally bouncing up. One all the way to 882. And then it did another reverse split. Then it came all the way back down. You see it's fading, fading. This is for me a wedge though. See this? This wide wedge into a tight wedge means it's going to probably explode up. And I would look for 150 to 175, you know, immediately. Then this two level, we'll see if we get to this two level on this. I like the volume, I mean, increasing volume days. And on this, you don't want it to go below 115. You can really see it right here. So, you know, they have COVID news. They're in COVID now. And that's a big, big move for them. So chance of spiking up are pretty strong on this. So that is XSPA, Health and Wellness and Spa uh, Services, and now they do COVID. All right, so let's move on. XE, XE LA. Excellent Technologies, 75 million float, uh, 1.24 short growth, 98 million market cap, cash 43 million, revenue 1.37 billion. That's really good. Assets 1 billion. Stock puts 306%, insiders 25%, institutions own 7%, no income listed. Current debt though is 163 billion. Enterprise value though, 167 billion. Wow. It's valued at 1.67 billion, but it's only 98 million market cap right now. This is another long business summary. Transaction processing operates in the following segments: healthcare solutions, legal and loss prevention, uh, healthcare solutions, accounts payable, accounts receivable. Collection analysis. The company was formed in 2014, uh, July 15, 2014, headquartered in Irving, Texas. 76 million buys on insiders and 139 million sells. Wow. A lot of action here. A lot going on with this stock. 1.37 billion sales on Finviz, float 60 million. You look down at Finviz, what they say. Trying to figure out what exactly they do. They process solutions, enterprise information management. Like, what does that mean? Document management, digital business. Company operates through segments. Information processing, healthcare solutions, legal loss, prevention services. Provides lending solutions for mortgages, auto loans, banking solutions, anti money, money laundering sanctions. Your bank cross, water settlement, property, casualty insurance. Uh, offers data, analytical services, eyewitness services, revenue, all kinds of different services. So that's what they do. Any recent news? Bragger, Eagle, and Squire investigating certain officers and directors of Peabody Energy, EQT, Electric Technologies, I guess maybe selling shares. Excellent Technologies engages UBS Investment Bank to explore strategic alternatives. They secured a term loan of $145 million. Uh, this stock was from... Uh, 2015 March, then it went sideways and down, bounced up to seven and bounced all the way down. And yeah, this is as low as it's been. Big volume now. As you can see here, draw this line. Yeah, it's sideways. And then it moved down. Look at this wedge. What was this low here? So 
below was about, yeah, just about 15 cents. And then this trend line is coming down hard. See that? So you have this line, this line. And now we're stacked pretty sideways. This is on the weekly. Yeah, it's trying to get over 75. Actually, I could probably bring this up, this line. All right, you can see here now, you know, the big move down, it's a wedge. And then, see the low, the low kept getting higher, higher. And you can see here, we'll mark a line right here at the 75 cents in this. You know, all these pennies too, like people trade Apple, you know, these aren't investments necessarily. I mean, you can take a shot on some of them. Um, if you're playing them long term for like maybe some big bounces, they do rise up. But, you know, these run the same line. See these quarter, they're running lines. Algos, <clears throat> Algos know all the lines here, $75. So this went down, look at this bounce up, tried to break through that 75, get pushed down, pushed down again. Hug this 30, 40 cent line. Now we're going up again. Look at the volume here too. All the volume on up days is much larger than the down days. That means to me, the stock they want to push up, eventually they'll push this up. And what do I see in this? Above 75, $1. Yeah, once we get over one, who knows, 150 to two, that trend line maybe. So I'd look towards that. And this low keeps getting higher. You don't want it to go below about 40 cents. On this stock. Stock seems a little bit more sketchy. You know, they have a lot of sales and revenue, a lot of debt. Um, <clears throat> then there's other things going on with it. They scored a loan, so it's a lot going on with this stock. So, but it looks potential. Like this, there's the move. You one, two, and it actually goes up. Some big news. So let's see today. What did it do here? It was very choppy. Yeah, it did move, but it's pre-market, the big move. All right, so that's for XELA. So I'm going to point this out in one of my, um, when I had the video on, he came in, we live, and CTRM, we're going to check this out. That was a good find by him for Pennyland. All right, CTRM is Caster Maritime, 125 million float. Short growth is going down 81% now, minus 81. Market cap, 43 million. Cash, 37 million. Revenue, 10 million. Stocks, what's 898%. Insiders, on 4%. Institutions, 21%. That's pretty good for this penny stock. Current debt, 18 million. Enterprise value, 12 million. All right, they engage in provision of shipping, transportation services through its ownership of dry bulk vessels, offer seaborne transportation service for dry bulk cargo, including iron ore, coal, grain, collectively referred to as major bulk steel, fertilizer, cement, uh, bauxite, sugar, and scrap metal, collectively referred to as minor bulks. The company was founded by Petros. Pangiatis on September 12th, 2017. Headquarters in uh, Limassol, Cyprus. So bulk shipping. No insiders information. They have uh, sales 10 million, float 113 million. Let's see what Pin Business to say here. They do a lot of cargo, dry bulk shipping. Any news? It did a 26 million registered direct offering. That was January 8th. I see the 100 day extension to meet NASDAQ's price rule to get above. I think, it, let me see, what is it, a dollar? Two dollars. Company shares, yeah, they got to be over one dollar. All right, so let's see what this has got going on. 
<clears throat> the monthly for no reverse splits, it started out. You see, this is jumped to 19 when this started on this monthly. We came crashing down the weekly, and it's all been down. Daily, see this? Yeah, big spikes, but it's still in the trend down. Trend down. Tried to break the 75, looks like. You know, people were thinking it was going to go up and really dropped. Got the hammer dropped on them. Then this went all the way to, let me get this line. Hold on a second. This 15 cent line's all messed up. That's yeah, a little better. Let's put this down to 12 cents. See, this went all the way down to 12. Yeah, nothing going on much with this chart except you're seeing, that's why I keep saying, look at the volume in all these penny stocks. Look how big the volume is compared to the other years, months. It's really picking up. So, you know, these penny stocks are just on fire right now. 10 cents, 50 cents, 25 to a dollar. And, you know, this is coming up. It's a rounding move. You have sideways, the rounding bottom. And then we're going to probably, this squeezes up. 50 cents, 75, 75 is big, big, big line here. If we get to that, you know, $1, pretty self-explanatory, 75 to $1. And you want this low to keep rising. You want it to stay above this 1320 EMA. You know, longer term, you don't want it to go here. 12 cents, that'd be really bad. So, yeah, this is only, what is this? Market okay, cap 44 million. They have 37 million in cash. That's not bad. They haven't done any splits. So see this right here. I love this move. This is a classic penny stock, and a lot of stocks move right here. And then we go up. And then you know, look for 50, 75, one dollar. This might take a few weeks, I'm not sure, but there's big volume coming in on this. So more good penny plays, CTRM. And that's it for this. We're going to switch it to four now because five is taking a little bit too long so I can get more videos out. All right, please subscribe. Uh, Mike came in trade, stock wits, Instagram, Mike Frank 98, TikTok, Mike Frank, I, 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 Twitter, Mike Frank 007. Trade ideas, hit my referral in the link in uh, my YouTube. All right, that's it for now. So, you know, more good stocks ahead after this video. We'll I'm gonna try to do three more if I have the energy. So that's it. Peace. Peace, everybody.